Okay. My name is David D. Shine. I'm an author. I'm also a professor at Cameron School of Business, University of St. Thomas. And I have written a variety of articles, but I've written a book called The Decline of America, 100 Years of Leadership Failures. It's a quick uh, shot of the book. And I wrote the book because I felt that there is a need for us to approach the leadership of America in a different way and to uh, point out some of the things that we've done right over the last hundred years and some of the things that we've done wrong and to try and come up with some solutions to make sure the next hundred years is even better than it has been. So, Dr. Sean, you're a professor, right? Yes. And so what you've done basically is what you would do with your students and you've graded the presidents based on their performance. That is correct. And, and uh, nobody got an A and in fact only one president barely got a B and that was uh, Harry Truman got a B minus. He was the highest grade in the book. So in addition to um, being an author and a professor, um, you're also a consultant for small businesses, is that correct? That is correct. I do uh, try and help uh, businesses primarily with employment related matters. I've been doing that for over 40 years and uh, focus on uh, legal compliance and also practical compliance. Um, now, a little bit different question. You were in, you were on a podcast or a, actually a radio program this past weekend and you were asked a question that I thought was very interesting and it was to handle this crisis that we're going through now, this coronavirus, coronavirus crisis, since you've written a book on presidents and you've graded them, which of the previous presidents would you like to have in charge right now with all that's going on in the world? Well, I was, uh, had the opportunity to join my friend Terry Maxwell on KNZR in Bakersfield, California uh, on uh, Monday evening. And uh, he asked me that question fairly early in the interview about uh, who I'd like to see as the president uh, running the country at this particular time of the crisis with the coronavirus. And uh, he and I had a little debate about it. Uh, he thought careful Cal Coolidge, quiet Cal, might be the best choice. Uh, I voted for Harry Truman, who is the highest rated president in my book, and uh, because he's a straight shooter, and I think Calvin Coolidge had some of the same features. Also, I think uh, Calvin Coolidge has a little bit to offer from the standpoint that we, we want to be careful what we do with money. I am one of the drivers for me in writing my book was the issue of the huge national debt that we are cursing our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren and threatening the future of America by continuing to run up this huge deficit. And I hear a lot of discussion in Washington about throwing money at things and I don't know that that's necessarily the best approach and so I'm very concerned about that. So what is it about Harry Truman that would make you want him to be the president or would be our leader today? Well, I'm a big fan of common sense. I, I think sometimes we get so tangled up in the, and, and as an academic I think some people might find this a little funny because academia is oftentimes uh, credited with uh, using a lot of big words and a lot of complicated approaches and uh, sometimes I think we need things that are down to earth. Uh, Harry Truman, by the way, on the record is the only person who uh, of the last hundred years of presidents who did not graduate from college, by the way. Wow. But uh, I, I learned that he was admitted to law school, so I'm not quite sure how you get admitted to law school, but that was in a past period. But he was a very down-to-earth person, and I think sometimes when you have an awful lot of hysteria going on, that it's good to have down-to-earth people, uh, real grassroots people involved in making decisions. Now, my book Ed is, uh, covers Presidents Woodrow Wilson through Barack Obama. Uh, my book only includes a passing reference to uh, Donald Trump because he is elected president at the end of my book, which runs through the end of uh, Obama's uh, second term. And, but I will say that I think Trump is doing the best that he can do given the particular circumstances, but I'm still concerned 
that we're talking about rather carelessly throwing money at the situation rather than evaluating this uh, case by case. And I, I use a very specific example. I'm a frequent traveler and uh, I am very unhappy with what we call legacy airlines. That's Delta, that's United, that's American. Uh, they've been allowed to buy up the smaller airlines and uh, they have uh, implemented over the last five or six years, basically since the recovery from the last uh, economic crisis in 08, 09, to implement a number of very anti-consumer policies. And there's a lot of discussion today about bailing out these very same airlines. And I remind everyone that we are in a capitalist economy that uh, nobody has come over and said, gee, let's bail out Claremont Management Group and, uh, and other fine small businesses like the ones that I do consulting for. I actually consult for large and small firms, but I especially take care of a lot of small and medium-sized firms in several markets in the United States. And I'm concerned that bailing out the airlines a, is unfair to the majority of businesses in America, and B, would reward airlines that have been very unfair in their administrative practices. So, uh, and I'm sure that the ones they're talking about are the legacy carriers. I'm not hearing about uh, bailouts for some of the more efficient airlines like Southwest Airlines or JetBlue. So thank you, Dr. Shine. Now, if someone listening would like to have you come speak to their organization, are you available? Absolutely. And uh, despite the limitations on travel, I'll go pretty much anywhere that I, I can get. Uh, domestic travel has not been restricted yet. And of course, anything in the greater Houston area uh, is certainly uh, a fair game. And uh, other places will certainly be happy to talk about it. So other than your book, um, what other topics would you talk about if you came to um, an organization's meeting? Well, one of the areas that I have been asked to do, I do speak for a number of national organizations. Uh, of course, a lot of these meetings are, are on hiatus or canceled or postponed, but a number of industry groups have meetings and I am a frequent guest to talk about current employment topics. One of the, the popular themes, I do a presentation called the Top Ten uh, employment concerns today are the 10 hottest things in employment and so we talk about the issues that employers need to worry about. Obviously right now coronavirus would be number one but there are a lot of other issues that employers need to deal with. Uh, another issue that is uh, very hot is whether someone is actually an employee or an independent contractor and so uh, employers need to be very careful to make sure if they call someone an independent contractor that they really are. The consequences of misclassifying a person as an employee uh, versus an independent contractor could be very significant. So how would someone get in touch with you? The um, easiest way to do it is to uh, go to our website, uh, World Wide Web, ClaremontManagementGroup.com. Thank you, Dr. Shannon.